Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Light of the Valley. Uh, it is actually a special day today. Uh, it's the day of Pentecost, 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, 50 days after the Passover. And Pentecost originally given in the Old Testament as a worship practice that it would be the first fruits of the wheat harvest that the people would gather together at the temple in Jerusalem and they would offer those, those first fruits of the wheat harvest and worship the Lord because he is the provider of all things. But on the day of Pentecost, after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, it takes on an entirely new purpose. We see it as a moment when God can unify people once again in the most important way, that is through his word. So our order of service is all printed out for you in your uh, bulletin, uh, minus the hymns. The hymns we'll use the red hymnals for when we come to them. But we'll begin actually with the uh, Pentecost Day reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. And these words will serve as a basis of this morning's sermon later on. So we'll begin on page 3. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of our Lord. We'll sing our first hymn. It's hymn 182, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Hymn 182, that's in the red hymnal located just in front of you.
continue on page four in our worship folder. The spirit of the living God allows the meek to speak. Pour out your spirit upon us, O Lord. The spirit of the living God brings healing to the hurting. Pour out your spirit upon us, O Lord. The spirit of the living God inspires faith in the faltering. Pour out your spirit upon us, O Lord. The spirit of the living God comes streaming through the hearts and minds of all who have been brought to faith in Jesus Christ. In each and every life, O Lord, reveal the Spirit's power. O Holy Spirit, with the confidence Christ Jesus has given us, we come to you confessing our sins and receiving your strength. Come as the gift of truth to expose all pretense and self-deceit. Come as the rushing wind and scour our souls of all that is stale, dusty, and sour. Come as tongues of fire and purge us of everything that is corrupt, base, and infected. Come as the breath of the risen Christ, bringing forgiveness and new life. Come as the counselor to encourage integrity and faithfulness. Come as the seal of adoption that we may rejoice. O grace of Christ, redeem us. O love of God, unfold us. O power of the Holy Spirit, invigorate us. Amen. God's word declares, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake our sins are forgiven. Those who believe in Christ are the children of God and are given the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. We pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. If you've ever wondered... Why doesn't the world have one single language? God actually explains why. In a moment of arrogance and disobedience, people decided, we're going to build a tower so great that it will reach the heavens and that we will never be scattered in this whole world. People will know who we are. At the time, they had one language. It was conceivable, possible. But God's command to them had been, go and fill the earth. By building this tower, they are saying, no, God, we're going to do what we want to do. So God confused their languages that day. That's the story we hear in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Then they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come. Let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the face of the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it's called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of our Lord. Please stand to sing the Alleluia's. Just two short verses, 
or something Jesus said before he went to the cross. In it, he promises again that he will send the Holy Spirit to his disciples. And what will the Holy Spirit do for them? He will testify to the truth that Jesus is the Christ, our Savior. We hear now from John chapter 15, beginning at verse 26. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I invite the Sunday school children to come forward to sing. today is actually, we think of red and we think of fire. Because we think, we're thinking about someone very specifically today. It's God the Holy Spirit. We don't think about God the Holy Spirit much. We think a lot about Jesus, God's Son. We think a lot about God the Father. You know, He made those mountains and those rivers and He gives us our food every day. What does that Holy Spirit do? God the Holy Spirit. Do you know God? What does He do? Well, yeah, and God, yeah, God does provide all things, and the Holy Spirit is God. You know what he does specifically is he comes to you through the Word of God. He actually causes you to believe it. What was that? Yes, God is our King. Our Holy Spirit comes to us so that we believe this. One of the ways that he comes to us is he comes to us in baptism. When you were baptized, he came to you then. So that you would believe that Jesus did die for your sins and take them all away. And he did something really special today. We call it today Pentecost. A really big word that just means 50 years. But on Pentecost, he came like fire on the disciples. Didn't hurt them. Didn't burn them. But then they could speak in languages they never had known before. They could speak, you know, like we would, if it happened today, you could speak in Spanish without ever having studied Spanish. You could speak in German without ever having studied German. You could speak in any language... Because God wanted them to share Jesus. Yeah, God and the Holy Spirit let them speak in those other languages so they can share what Jesus had done with others. So that's what the Holy Spirit does. We kind of forget about him sometimes, but he does a lot of really important work. Most important work is he brings us together 
believing that Jesus is our Savior from sin. So let's thank the Holy Spirit for, for bringing us in that family and causing us to believe us. Let's pray. Your Holy Spirit, thank you for coming into our lives through your word, through our baptisms, for washing away all of our sins and causing us to believe in Jesus as our Savior. Be with us always, that we would always believe in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. You go head back to your parents. Thanks for coming out. All right. We're going to continue by singing our next hymn, and that one is printed for you in the bulletin. Uh, there is a Redeemer. It's right there on page number eight. chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. But as we begin meditation on that word, let us pray. Well, Holy Spirit, come to us now through your word that we may call upon your name, call upon the name of the Lord, and so be saved. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, got to love one another right now. I grew up on that kind of stuff. I grew up on that. That was my dad's music. And I thought about those words, and you know, there's a lot of things that bring people together. Music is one of them. Just go to any concert, you can see people gathered around, singing along with the lyrics, enjoying that same kind of vibe and emotion, and just... For a moment, it just seems like everybody is just together. And wouldn't it be great if there was an ultimate song, if all it took was a song like this, a lyric like this, and people would just all be united. But there are 
reasons people don't like that music, don't like those lyrics, and would stay away. You might like country, I like rock. You might like polka, I like something else, not polka. <laughs> but you think about the, all the things that can unite people, and there's so many that exist out there. It can just be simply history. You grew up over there, me too, no way, hey, we have something in common. Your mom's name is that, that's the same as my mom's name. We can be united on a cross. If there's something very important to us, if we think about you know, pro-life, we think about issues like that that can cause us to gather together and rally for it. We can think about it in terms of even tragedy can unite us. As we saw, when terrorists come to our soil and attack things like 9-11, we get united against a common enemy. Whatever it takes to unite, there has to be some commonality that exists, something that brings us together. And there's some commonalities that brought two different groups of God-fearing Jews together on the day of Pentecost. Now the first group we know a little bit better than the other. The first group was Jesus' disciples, newly replenished to twelve because they added on Matthias to take Judas' place. They were there because Jesus had specifically told them after he had risen from the dead, before he ascended to heaven, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Jesus was the one who had brought them together, and Jesus was the one keeping them together right there in Jerusalem, even as they're getting ready to celebrate this festival of Pentecost. They had been there. Because of the word of God. But then there was another group. A group that's so diverse that Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, says that God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven were there. And rightfully so. This was a major festival in the Old Testament. Taking place 50 days after the Passover. Bringing in the first fruits of the wheat harvest. And they would worship God and they would praise him because of it. They were there offering those sacrifices, worshiping the Lord. They had been brought to Jerusalem by God's command, by his word. And when these two groups, separate from each other, both brought to Jerusalem because of what God had said, that's when it happened. That's when all of a sudden you heard this sound like the blowing of a violent wind, and it was just the sound. No dust was kicking up, kicking up, no trees were swaying, no hair was being blown in the wind, but there was just a sound. And following the sound, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of the disciples. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And they must have been in some place public, some place where these other people could have seen them, because they're walking by, they're noticing, they're hearing other languages being spoken, and it grabs their attention. They begin to listen. They're a little confused because they're not from where they're from. They don't share the same language. In fact, these men are all from the north, they're all from Galilee. Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it? that each of us hears them in our native language. The Holy Spirit had come on the disciples and they were speaking in language they had never studied before as God had enabled them to. And you can kind of just imagine what people were picking up as they were coming by this scene, gathering around and seeing it all. Some, they were probably hearing, maybe the disciples were even praising God for Pentecost, for that, that wheat harvest that he provides, that he has made everything for us, continues to give us all that we need. Maybe what they were hearing was praise from the disciples' lips that Jesus had fulfilled yet another promise. He said he was going to send us the Holy Spirit, and he did that. We could now have that gift. We are now being reminded of all the things that he taught us while he was still with us so that we can proclaim them. And you have to imagine that part of their declaring of the wonders of God included everything they had seen just 50 days ago. That they had seen their Lord and their Savior, their Messiah, go to the cross, willingly let himself be nailed, willingly suffering and dying, and then rising back to life, saying in that, that moment on Easter as the tomb was broken forward and no one was in there, I have conquered sin, I have conquered the devil, and I have conquered death. These are the wonders 
that the disciples are proclaiming and people are hearing it and they're hearing it in their own languages. They know something truly special is happening here as they heard the disciples declaring the wonders of God in their own tongues. 2,000 years ago, it was the word of God that brought people together. And it brought them together in the most important way. Because in that moment, it wasn't just about, hey, we have some, some commonalities here, we, hey, we have some shared history. But they were brought together knowing who God is and what he had done for them. That as Peter starts his sermon, he tells them, this is what the prophet Joel said some 800 years before us. And so it speaks to us some 2,000 years after Peter. This is what God said would happen. That people would prophesy, that people would speak filled with the Holy Spirit. So that we can hear the wonders of God, that we can hear what Christ has done for us. So that you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. What the Holy Spirit was doing that day, as he was working through those disciples, as he was working in all the words that were being spoken, all the wonders that were being declared, people were uniting in salvation. They were being brought together by what God had said to be saved. By doing so, it didn't matter where you had come from. It didn't matter your ethnicity. It didn't matter your IQ. It didn't matter your relationship status. It didn't matter your musical preferences. It didn't matter what causes you support it. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That God, through the Holy Spirit, as these wonders are being proclaimed and declared, people are coming to faith. People are now learning who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for them. And it even tells us at the very end of Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people were baptized and were added to their number that day. 3,000 people, over 3,000 people were brought together by God's word. It didn't matter where they had come from. It didn't matter who they were. Because they all had the same Savior and the same God. The Holy Spirit brought people together to be saved back on the day of Pentecost. And he's still doing that today. It's a testament to the people who are here that you've come here to hear about God. You've come here to hear about your Savior, to be built up in Him. You've come here so that the Holy Spirit can act in your life so that you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. God brings us together through His Word in the most important way for salvation. I say that, and it's true. But doesn't God's Word also divide? Aren't there people who hear that same word of God and it causes anger and resentment? People who hear that word of God and they're so quick to dismiss it and make fun of it. Even on that day of Pentecost, what did some of the people say as people were marveling over this event, marveling at the languages they speak, and yet some of them are saying, they're drunk. They've had too much wine. Why would you bother listening to the rubbish coming out of their mouths? And we don't know, were those ones who said they had too much wine, were they part of the 3,000 that after Peter's sermon they repented, that they too were baptized, that they called on the name of the Lord be saved? We don't know. God's word does bring people together, but sometimes people don't want God to do the work. They want to do the work for God. It was represented even in that Old Testament lesson, following the days of the flood, following the days of Noah. There the people came together, even though God had said, fill the earth. They said, let's build a city so that we are never scattered. You know what, let's make a tower up to heaven so that people will say, we are just as great as God. You know what, we're separated from God, we'll build our way to God. But that's not how you draw closer to God. We don't draw closer to Him by what we do. Now, in fact, 
going back even farther before the Tower of Babel, there was a separation that was made between God and humankind. A separation caused by disobedience. And no matter how much effort we put into it, no matter how ingenious we are at construction, no matter how good we think we are, and no matter how many good works we think we do in life, that tower to God is never going to be completed. It will never reach all the way because simply we are just not that good. And the more we try to make God come to us, the more we get frustrated that the gap never closes, that we never inch closer. Sin separates us from God. <laughs> We cannot, we cannot bridge that chasm. So instead, God bridged it for us. That's why he sent his one and only son. To come down in human flesh. To live perfectly for us because we're not up to snuff. We just don't do well enough. That he gave his life as sacrifice for our sins, that by what he did, he would now bring humankind and man together again because all sins are removed, all sins are washed away. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means no matter what you've done in your past, no matter how often you've failed, no matter how often you have not measured up to the standard you should have been to, no matter what people label you as, no matter how you even look at yourself, God has removed that gap of sin. All of us are equally sinful by God. All of us are equally saved. All of us are brought together into that salvation by what God has done for us. He has brought us together with his word by the declaring of those wonders. We have come to believe it, and we are saved. All of us, that same status that we have before the Heavenly Father, that he looks at us, he doesn't see imperfect. He doesn't see liar. He doesn't see cheater. He doesn't say unfaithful. He sees perfect because he sees his son. He sees the robes of righteousness covering over you, and you are saved. Knowing that that message has brought us together in that same faith, that's why we want to continue to do what happened here on Pentecost. That we continue to declare the praises of the God who saved us. Because we know everyone has that same salvation. It is available to all people without reservation. It doesn't matter what music you like, where you come from, your ethnicity, your relationship status. God saves all. And that's what we do. That's the message we bring and what the Holy Spirit works through as we share that with our children. We take time to read them Bible stories, to talk about what they learned in Sunday school. That's what we receive by coming here and as you invite your friends and your neighbors to come to church too because you want them to know of the God who has saved them. It's why we give part of our offerings to train missionaries so that they can learn other languages, languages maybe we're not so talented to learn, and that they can go out and that they can spread the gospel, that they can tell people the wonders of God so that they can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Because that's what the Holy Spirit did on the day of Pentecost. That's what God continues to do through His Word. He brings people together in the most important way possible. He brings us together in salvation brings us together as one family with God. So remember that as you declare those praises of God, as you testify to the truth, the Holy Spirit will work through your words. And He will do everything to bring people together in that most important way to call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus.
We'll continue with our worship at the top of page 9. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, He daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, He will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. Just a note before uh, we continue our worship by gathering our offerings, uh, to our guests and visitors who are with us today, if you'd like uh, me to follow up with you after the service today, we have just little uh, information cards in the pew in front of you. You can fill that out and put that in the offering plate as it comes around, or uh, give it to one of the ushers on your way out today. So with that, we'll continue by gathering our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Please stand for prayer. We use the prayer of the church as we find it, beginning on page 10 in the bulletin. Most Holy Spirit, who teaches us to know Christ and all his benefits, guided by you, we pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. On this, the birthday of the New Testament church, May all Christ's people be filled with his righteousness, peace, and joy. You descended upon the disciples and gave them the ability to speak in languages they had never learned. We ask that today you would continue to give individuals a willing spirit to master foreign languages. Help our pastors to retain and sharpen their Greek and Hebrew skills so that they might study the Bible in those original languages and thereby be well equipped to explain your word to the souls in their care. Raise up young men and women in our church body who are willing to learn foreign languages so that we might send them out into a dying world with the life-giving gospel. We ask you to bless all of our recent and upcoming graduates and vicars from Martin Luther College and Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, as well as all of our Wells missions at home and abroad, that through them, you, the Holy Spirit, would continue your gracious work of calling gathering, enlightening, and sanctifying by the gospel. And thus bring many to the only faith that is of value, sincere faith in Christ Jesus as our perfect substitute and Savior from sin. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions.
into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your infinite mercy and goodness. We know that you will answer every prayer in the way that is best for the eternal welfare of your children. For we pray in Jesus' name, and we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever.
you hear may glorify you in the world, that they with the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please remain standing for our final hymn. It's hymn 183. Hymn 183. for you uh, today. Um, yard work, we would push that back. It's not going to be this coming Saturday. It's going to be June 4th. We're hoping we're going to have an announcement by Chuck Kidd in just a bit. Um, try to enlist some help for it for that. Um, but some other things coming up. I'm going out of town, so I have to leave uh, for a meeting. I'll be gone. I'm going to combine it with uh, vacation. So I'll be gone for two weeks. Uh, if a emergency arises, you can still get a hold of me on my cell phone, but you can call uh, Andy Hartman, our head elder, he's poking in right over here. Um, or if it's a pastoral emergency, you can contact uh, one of our pastors down at Prince of Peace in Taylorsville. I listed their phone, their cell phone numbers in there, Pastor Bader, Pastor Mitchell. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm happy that I uh, was able to get some guest preachers in, so you'll have a, a, a special treat next Sunday. It'll be... Vicar Joshua Shandor, uh, he is actually a pastor in training. Uh, we haven't seen a vicar here at Light of the Valley in a number of years, almost a decade actually, if you can believe that. Um, but he's going to come here, lead in Bible study and lead in worship. Uh, and then the week after that, we'll have Pastor Mitchell from Prince of Peace coming uh, over Memorial Day weekend. Uh, about the roof, let's talk about the roof. Um, so just kind of what happened this last week, to give you kind of an update. Uh, so we had the insurance adjuster, the structural engineer, and the contractor out. 
Uh, so they took a look at it. Structural engineer has to write up a report about what it would take to fix everything back the way it was. He says that takes about a week, and then he submits that into the insurance, and then the insurance tells us how much money we get, then we hire a contractor, then we get working on actually fixing the building. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at. We're just getting things going through the insurance. Um, but the, it looks hopeful we'll uh, be completely restored by the fall. Uh, so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Um, I'll, of course, keep you up to date as we know more uh, as it comes up. Um, so then no, no Sunday school next Sunday. Our teachers, a lot of teachers are out of town, so we're not able to, to staff it next Sunday. But there will be adult Bible class. And then Memorial Day weekend, because I know a lot of you are going to be gone. Uh, no Bible classes, but worship at normal at 1030. Uh, so I want to give uh, Chuck a chance to stand up here, talk about uh, what we're doing with the, the yard. I'm not going up there. I'll just stand here. Uh, so like, uh, like said, we're going to do the, the song on June 4th. Um, so able-bodied We've got an old job for everybody, so if you can be here for that day, that'd be great. If you really feel ambitious and you could really use your help, uh, there's a lot of prep work, as you know, with any major project, there's always something that's got to be done in advance. So right now we're tilling up and picking up rocks and all that other stuff. So if you have the ambition and the spirit so moves you, we come out and get with me or Steve and you know, we'll work together to uh, do those things uh, for that day. Uh, so with that, uh, feel free to grab some cookies in the fellowship hall, say hello to the people you worship with today. I'll uh, get to the back so I can shake your hands and wish you God's blessings on your week. So uh, until I see you next, God be with you.